Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a tip jar on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is go into the game and as you'll see, we have our tip jar right here. And when we click on it, we can purchase the dev product. And then once we buy it, it'll notify everybody in the server. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a dev product. Now, if you're not familiar with it, all the dev product is, is a way for users to give Robux to our games multiple times. So maybe if we set up a game pass for this tip, right, if we had a tip game pass, users would only be able to purchase it once and they couldn't tip again and again. But with the dev product, it allows users to purchase it over and over and over so that we can get a bunch of Robux from these tips. So what we're going to do, we need to create a tip dev product. And the way we're going to do that, we want to go over to the web browser of your choice. Uh, and you want to go to this page right here, roblox.com slash develop. Now on this page, you'll see we have a bunch of things here. But what you want to find is you want to find the name of your game. So in this case, the name of my game is Tip Jar. Uh, yours might be named Cafe or something like that. You just want to find your game. And then you want to click on the settings icon next to it. And then you want to click on the configure game button. Now in this tab, I know it probably looks confusing. There's a bunch of different things. All we want to do is we want to click on this developer products panel on the side. And this is the place that we're going to create our developer product. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the create new button. Uh, and then right here, you see we can give it a name. Uh, and then right here, we can give it a price. So I'm just going to name mine maybe test tip 15 Robux. But you would name it like 10 Robux tip or 15 Robux tip. Uh, and then we want to set the price however much we said in the name. So in this case, I want the tip to cost 15 Robux. So we set the price to 15 Robux. After this, we're going to click Create. And then you'll see right here, it gives us an ID, a developer product ID on the side. You just want to highlight that and copy and paste it. So just copy it to your clipboard, and we're going to use it a little bit later. OK, so now that your developer product is created, we can actually get into working on the tip jar. So I'm not going to show you how to build this tip jar. You can make it however you'd like. I have a model in the description if you're interested in using that. But all I have right here is a tip jar. And then inside of the jar, I have a bunch of money. You don't need these. All that you need is a part because we're going to put a click detector underneath this part. So just make sure you have a model with the part in it. And that can act as your tip jar. Also what we want, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the beginning when we purchased the dev product, when we purchased a tip, it notified everybody in the server. And the way it did that was with the screen GUI. So all you want to do is create a tip GUI or a screen GUI under starter GUI. And then you want to create a text label underneath of it. And then you just want to set the text to player name just purchased a tip. And then later on we're going to script it so it actually puts in the player name. But this is important just so that everybody in the server knows exactly who purchased a tip. So put that in there and then we just want to set the enabled property of this GUI to false. And then we can actually get into scripting this. So what I want to do, I'm going to create a new click detector under the jar. And this is how we're going to detect the click when the jar is clicked. And then we also want to create a script under here. And I'm just going to name it tip script, but you can name it whatever you'd like. And we're going to delete the first line. We're going to delete the print hello world in here. And we can actually get into coding this. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a reference to the marketplace service. And the reason I'm doing this is because the marketplace service is how we deal with anything related to Robux on Roblox. So in this case, we want to prompt users for the purchase of a 15 Robux developer product. So we want to use marketplace service to do that. So I'll say local marketplace service equals game colon get service marketplace service. After this, I want to get a reference to our click detector because that's how we're going to get when this jar is clicked. So the click detector would just be script.parent.clickdetector. So we'll say local click detector equals script.parent.clickdetector. And then after this, we have one more variable I want to set up. I want to set up the dev product ID. So we have that copy to our clipboard from earlier. We just want to throw it into a variable. So I'll say local dev product ID equals and then just paste it in and then that'll know that'll tell Roblox exactly what dev product to prompt the user for the purchase. Um, after this what we want to do we have a few more lines for the base of this. We want to get when the click detector is clicked so that we can prompt the user for the purchase. So we're going to hook into the mouse click event of the click detector. We'll connect it up to a function. And then inside of this function, we have one parameter we want to get. We want to get the player. So whichever player clicked the click detector, that's what this variable is going to be set equal to. Um, so what we want to do is after they click it, so they click the jar, we want to prompt them for the purchase so that they know, OK, you click the jar. You want to probably want to buy a tip. Now we're going to prompt you just to confirm to make sure you actually want to buy one. 
And the way we do that is we call the prompt product purchase function of marketplace service. So I'm just going to say marketplace service colon prompt product purchase, the third one down. And then this takes two arguments. We have to say the player that we want to prompt and then the dev product ID. So fortunately, we already have our player variable set up. So we'll pass in the player that clicked. And then we'll also pass in the dev product ID variable that we created earlier. And that's actually all you have to do for now. You know, if you don't want that screen GUI across the top that says that the player donated, you could just stop it right here. And as you'll see, it'll work perfectly. If we can click, we can buy, we can do all that. But I think it's always nice to notify all the players in the servers uh, just so that the player feels some kind of reward for tipping. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to, this next part's a little complicated, but I'm going to go through it step by step. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get when the product purchase is finished. And the way we do that is we say marketplace service dot prompt product product purchase finish. I know that's pretty long, but that's just how Roblox does it. So that's the event that we want to hook into and we're going to connect it up to a function. And then inside of this function, we have three different parameters that we want to get. What this passes in is the player user ID. So the player that purchased a product. So player user ID. We have the purchase product ID. So purchase product ID. So if they purchased this dev product, it would pass in that ID. If they purchased maybe another one, it would pass in that ID. And then the final one is the purchased variable. And all this means is if they clicked yes, purchase, then it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. So this might not be the fact that they actually purchased it. All this means is that they somehow exited out of that little UI that came up, that little black UI that came down from the top. Um, so what we want to do, we need to actually check to make sure they purchased it. And we need to make sure they purchased this dev product. We need to make sure they purchased the dev product that we set up. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say if, create an if statement, if purchase is equal to true. So if they actually purchased it and purchased product ID is equal to our dev product ID. So if they purchased it, so if they click purchase and the product that they purchased was the dev product that we set up, then we can run some code in here. And this is the code that's actually going to set this visible to true and make it for every player on the server so that they can see that that player donated. Um, so what we're going to do, the first thing, I want to get a reference to all of our players. Uh, and the way we do that, we're going to create a table. We're going to say local players equals game.players colon get players. So we get all the players in the game into an array. Uh, and then what we want to do, this is part's going to be a little confusing. We want to loop through the players. So we want to say for every player, we want to run some code that makes this GUI visible for them. On the way we do that, we're going to use an IV in pairs loop. So we're going to say for... And this is confusing, but just follow along the way I do it. So for underscore comma player. So for each player in pairs, and then we say players. So for each player in the player table, do. We're going to run this code for every single player. We're going to loop through a bunch of times. So what we want to do, I want to create a variable to get a reference to the tip GUI. And all that looks like we can actually go into the game and see it for ourselves. So let's say we're looping through the players. And right now we are on maybe the orange shoot 4221 player. Well, the way we get a reference to this tip GUI right here, we say orangeude4221, which would be player dot player GUI dot tip GUI. And then we just want to set the enabled property on that to true. And that'll make it visible for that player. Um, so the way we're going to do that, just as I said, we're going to say create a new variable called tip GUI. And we're going to set it equal to player, which would be orangeude4221 in that case, dot player GUI, which kind of looks like starter GUI over here dot tip GUI or whatever the name of your screen GUI is that has that tip label. And that's the variable set up. So now it's super easy to set the enabled property of it. All we say is tip GUI dot enabled equals true. Now that seems pretty easy, right? Not too hard. But what it's going to do in this case, if we just set enabled to true, it's not actually going to say the player. It's just going to say player name just purchased a tip. So we need to set the text of this to the player that actually purchased the tip. We need to say orange shoot 4221 purchased a tip or Bob purchased a tip. We need to tell the players who purchased the tip. And the way we do that is we set the text property of the tip label. So we say tip GUI dot tip label, which is the label right over here dot text equals now what we want to do so right now we don't have the player's name that actually purchased the tip but we have their user ID so what we want to do is we want to get their name from their user ID so I'm gonna say game.players we're gonna call a method of game.players so game.players colon 
get name from user ID async. And I know that sounds pretty long, but this is what gives us, for any player on Roblox, this will give us their name from their user ID. So we say get name from user ID async, and then we're gonna pass in the player user ID, so whatever the user ID is. Uh, and then all we have, so right now we have their name, and then we just wanna concatenate that with a string. It says maybe purchased a tip. So in this case, it would be orange dude 4221 purchased a tip, or it would be Bob purchased a tip, or George, or whoever the player was purchased a tip. Now what we're gonna do after this, I wanna wait five seconds or however long you wanna wait until this GUI should go away. And I'm just gonna copy the code we had up here, all this code, we're just gonna copy it, create a few new lines under that wait, paste it in. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna delete the line that sets the text and then set tip GUI.enable to false. And that's just gonna make it invisible. So we set it enabled to true over here, just like this, and then you can see it. And then we put it back to false and then they can't see it again. And that's actually all we have to do, and this will make it work for every play in your game, that GUI will come up. And I know this was an extra step and it was probably a little difficult, but this is totally worth it, I think, because it gives players a reward for tipping. Uh, we purchase it, wait a sec, orange shoot 4221 purchase the tip, and then if we wait a few seconds, the GUI goes away. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pasteman link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.